the northernmost community in Newfoundland and Labrador, and the largest Inuit settlement along the province's north coast. It's the dead of winter. For Inuit, that means sea ice, and sea ice means freedom. It used to be that every November, the ocean would turn from blue to white. Each day, the layer of ice thickens. By December, the ice is a flat highway. Locals can venture further afield, able to hunt and fish, find wood to stay warm. But these days, the wait for the ice stretches on. This year, it's January before the ocean freezes enough to even walk on. You look scared. I am. Yeah. I am very scared. The regular for us is we spend about eight to nine months in cold weather and then about three to four months in the summer. And so like a lot of our culture and our livelihood is tied to co these cold temperatures and also a lot of our biodiversity, um, our wildlife, the things that we depend on for sustenance and for food, they also depend on cold weathers and you know this warmer weather is coming there's a lot of uncertainty on what that means for our communities and for our culture, so it's, it is very scary. There's no stopping what's happening here. All the latest gadgets, data and drone footage can't return the North Coast to the temperatures it once experienced. Climate change is hitting Labrador hard. It's getting warmer. By some accounts, average temperatures will rise by up to 12 degrees by the end of this century. And there's nothing anyone can do to reverse it. That's also like one of my fears as well because I am a mom and I do want my daughter to have those aspects of my culture grown into her life. And so it's, it's like the uncertainty is, is, is real and it's terrifying. As the environment here changes, it's forcing the people to change along with it. Rex Hallball Jr. heads an Inuit-owned company that uses digital technology to tell people whether the ice is thick enough to travel on. In this new world of unpredictable weather, this app is now essential for keeping them safe. SmartX was founded because what happened was that we had in 2009 and 2010, we had rain in January here in Nate. Um, today, it's what, minus 41 with the wind chill? Um, and that's what it's supposed to be, but back then, you know, we had rain, so it was in the plus. And, uh, so we, uh, we were seeing effects of climate change, so what happened was people were concerned about the, the climate that was changing and it was impacting our traditional way of life, so we weren't able to, you know, travel safely on ice because um, you know, people were falling through the ice and, you know, they were unsure of their, their travel routes. It's called Smart Ice, and it's helping 24 northern communities across Canada, that number growing. They deploy boys, long tubes that measure water and ice temperatures to tell how thick the ice is, and then relay that data to an app that residents can check before they travel. The company has also created a smart homotic, or sled, that operators can tow behind a snowmobile, checking ice thickness in remote areas in real time. Not traveling on the sea ice, that's one of the biggest things of our culture. You know, people say it's a part of our culture. It's not a part of our culture. It is our culture to travel on the sea ice. So, you know, in 20, 30 years, when people can't travel on the sea ice, that's going to be the last of our culture. You know, and, and when people think of Inuit, they think of people traveling on the sea ice. So that whole loss of the, the sea ice and the ability of traveling on it, that's going to be a loss of our culture. But the struggle to hang on to traditions that date back hundreds, if not thousands of years, in an isolated subpolar community comes with hurdles. Here, a cable broke as Hallwell was trying to train a new group of operators. He might not get another one in the mail for weeks. It is haunting, maybe, but I mean, really, um, the only thing that we can do now is try to come up with more tools like we have with Smart Eyes to monitor the CIs to ensure when people are traveling on the seas that they're safe and they can do it for longer periods of time to keep their culture alive. And, and really, that's the only thing. Like, we've always, you know, you know, we've always adapted to living in the North. 
It's just now we have to face a new way of adapting to living in the north where it's going to be lots of our culture, it's going to be lots of the sea. Without creative solutions like Smart Ice, Inuit here would face the dissolution of an ancient culture. Derek Pottle lives in Rigolet. Hunting, fishing, trapping is his identity. The land and the sea is who I am. It's, it's what keeps me alive, it's my heartbeat. It keeps me healthy, it keeps me grounded. South of Nain, thin ice. Trapping residents in their communities, they can't hunt or get wood to heat their homes. If it keeps going the way that it's going now, uh, we may not even have a winter like what we're so used to having, you know, and that's, if we see the continuation of what we've been seeing in the last 15 years or so, for the next 15 years, we could see some major, major changes. And if you listen to everything that's being put out there by the so-called experts, um, if we all stop, the whole world today stop using fossil fuel, we're not stopping this trend. My generation could be the last generation that knows this lifestyle, and that's, that's scary when you take, you know, a culture's identity away from but the land is changing. For the people on the coast, the change they're forced to live with isn't fair. The Inuit population, we're a very small population and we're probably some of the people who don't contribute a whole lot to climate change, but we're gonna be some of the first people who are gonna be very, very, very affected by climate change with the loss of our sea ice and the loss of our culture. For many here in Nain, it's all about adaptation. But while they know big changes are coming, it's impossible to predict how it'll all play out and affect the future of the Inuit way of life. Malone Mullen, CBC News, Nain, Labrador.